Thank you for joining me here today. My name is Brian Bunsmeyer. I'm the Executive Director of TAPS. And the subject is transfer students. As we get into the 22-23 school year, just kind of wanted to give an overview of what the transfer process is. And as new students enter your school, things that you might need to be aware of. Or if students are leaving your school, the same thing. What are the TAPS rules and what do you need to be aware of? One of the big keys of those TAPS is who do we represent and who do we not represent? TAPS represents the 238 member schools who have signed on this year to be members of TAPS. We do not represent schools that are in the SPC or in TCAF or in TCAL. Strictly our member schools are required to follow our transfer policies and rules. There are several differences. In the state of Texas, we have the University Interscholastic League, the UIL, which governs public school participation. Between the UIL and TAPS, while we both have transfer processes, there are a couple of significant differences. One, the UIL and the TEA in most cities have residency rules. You're assigned a, res a school based on your high school residency. In TAPS, we do not have residency rules. Many of our schools bring students from multiple zip codes in multiple program areas. It's not a transfer student under TAPS rules between the 8th and 9th grade. In most of the UIL situations, an 8th grader matriculating up to the 9th grade would be considered a member of that high school that they are intended to go to. And TAPS does not have a rule which limits transferring for athletic purposes. In the University Interscholastic League and in many other states, transferring for athletic purposes is not allowed and can create a situation where a student is ineligible for a period of time. Again, in TAPS, we do not have a rule that bans transferring for athletic purposes. And now, TAPS does have a transfer process. We require it for all high school students who are moving from one high school to another. There is a process, and it all begins with the student profile in Rank 1. Rank 1 is the TAPS database. It all begins with the student profile, which then, if the student answers they have attended another high school in the previous 12 months, they must fill out a student transfer form. A hundred questions which get to the bottom of who the student is, what they've participated in, who they've played for, who's coached them, all kinds of good information are going to pop up on the student transfer form. If the student participated in organized athletic teams in the previous 12 months, whether it be a home school team, a public school team, a private school's team, and regardless of whether it was in Texas or in any other state, they must then fill out a previous athletic participation form. Here in the office, we call that a PAPF. So, once we come in and once we get the STF, the student transfer form, and the PAPF, that process begins with our office's review of the information. So once our office receives it, we go through the policy of the STF. If there are any red flags or any areas that need additional information, we contact the new school. Then we look at the PAPF, same thing. Are there any objections noted from the previous school? Did the previous school not sign it? So if there's no information that would indicate a problem, the TAPS office then sends out the PAPF form to the new district for the new school and they have 48 hours with which to approve or raise questions. If they raise questions or if on the PAPF or the STF questions are raised, then the DEC, the District Executive Committee, will also then hold a hearing to determine final student eligibility. If student eligibility is denied, the parent and the school for which the student is attending can then appeal to the TAPS Executive Board. TAPS rules for transfer students are found in Section 104 of the TAPS Bylaws that outlines the process and the rules. Those can be found on our website at www.taps.biz. In the top left-hand corner, click on the word Bylaws. It'll take you to that long Google Doc form. Scroll down to Section 104. You can read the exact wording of our bylaw. Section 87 is the other bylaw, which governs transfer students, and that expressly forbids solicitation and improper solicitation of student athletes. There's a difference between financial aid and scholarships. Financial aid based on need or merit based are allowed. And then generally we have tampering. Did one school contact another school prior to leaving the other school? Again, TAPS info, it's www.taps.biz. You can reach us at info, I-N-F-O, at taps.biz, or reach out and give us a call at 254-947-9268. If you're in the transfer process, if you're thinking about transferring schools, if you're a school member that have more questions, or if you're a coach from a school that's either gaining or losing a student, we're here to help. Info, I-N-F-O, at taps.biz. 
254-947-9268. Again, my name is Brian Bunselmeyer. I'm the Executive Director of TAPS, and I appreciate you joining us here today.